Hello once again everyone, Luke here, welcome back to the Magic the Gathering tutorial. Last time we took a look at instants, counter spells, managing the stack and how to use it in our favor. And in part 5 we're going to look at activated abilities, artifacts, and equipment. So let's continue with the fifth part of our quest, card interactions. Many cards in Magic have special abilities even after they're cast. Some permanents have abilities you can activate, while others have abilities that trigger when certain conditions are met. For your final quest, you'll be using a red deck. Red's specialty is aggressive, quick creatures with interesting abilities. Your opponent is Alabaster Mage. So again, it looks like we jumped into a game in progress. We don't have any blockers. We got a Stormfront Pegasus, which is a 2-1 flyer coming at us, gonna do some damage. Nothing we can do about that, unfortunately. Looks like he put in a Staff of the Sun Mages, an artifact that whenever he casts a white spell or a planes enters the battlefield under his control, he's going to gain one life. That's definitely going to be handy. You've drawn Prodigal Pyromancer, a creature with an activated ability. That means this creature allows you to take an action, pay a cost, and then this creature does something, an effect. For example, Prodigal Pyromancer allows you to tap it, and if you do, it deals one damage to a creature or player of your choice. So that's going to come in handy, taking care of that Pegasus. Let's put out our Prodigal Pyromancer. Just like attacking, abilities that require a tap, like Prodigal Pyromancers, can't be activated while a creature is summoning sick. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to take care of that Pegasus right away, since he has summoning sickness. Alabaster Mage has cast an equipment. It usually improves a creature. Casting an equipment spell only puts it on the battlefield. To attach or reattach it, you need to pay its equip cost. Equipment remains on the battlefield even if the creature leaves. It looks like he's gonna attach an equipment. Let's see what it is, Bone Splitter. Equip creature gets plus two, plus zero at a cost of one colorless mana. He's gonna put that on his gargoyle, making it a 4-1. It's gonna do a lot more damage to us. This is gonna hurt. Wish we could take care of it with this Pyromancer, but unfortunately we can't yet. So now that our Pyromancer no longer has summoning sickness, we can go ahead and activate its ability here. Go ahead and tap it. Target a creature. Let's take out this Pegasus. Unlike auras, if a creature with an attached equipment leaves the battlefield, the equipment remains, ready to be reattached for the same equip cost. So as you saw, we took care of the gargoyle, but the equipment just moved over to the side. It doesn't get destroyed unless we have something that specifically destroys that equipment. Let's go ahead and put out our mountain. Like equipment, there are many artifact cards in Magic. Artifacts are usually colorless. This means that any color of mana may be used to cast them. Even some creatures are artifacts. Anything that affects artifacts can affect artifact creatures as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. We have a Gargoyle Sentinel. Artifact creature has Defender, so it can only block, it can't attack. Pay three colorless mana until end of turn. Gargoyle Sentinel, Sentinel loses Defender and gains flying. So that could be trouble. That Bone Splitter on it, if it flies through the air, I can't block it. You drew Torch Fiend. It has an activated ability that doesn't require tapping. 
These can be used even when a creature is summoning sick. Torch Fiend's ability requires you to sacrifice it, put it in your graveyard, to get the effect. So as you can see, we have a Torch Fiend, which is a 2-1 creature that if we pay a red mana, we can sacrifice it and then destroy a target artifact. So let's go ahead and put it in there. We should be able to take care of this gargoyle. Pay one red mana and see a gargoyle. Now we could tap this to do one damage to the mage, but we can also wait till the end of his turn since tap abilities are instants. Let's go ahead and keep it back as a blocker and wait. See what Alabaster Mage does during his turn. Okay, before he ends his turn, let's take a look at this. We got Archangel, a 5-5 Flying Vigilance creature. That's going to be trouble. And since he is ending his turn, let's go ahead and tap the Prodigal Pyromancer since it'll untap at the beginning of our upkeep. Oops, I did not mean to choose creatures. We want to choose players. So let's go ahead and do one damage to the Alabaster Mage. You drew Dragon Hatchling. Its activated ability costs one red mana. All activated abilities may be used as many times as you can pay the cost. Be careful, the ability only lasts until the end of the turn. So we have this Dragon Hatchling. We don't need to tap it. We just need to pay mana, just like the Torch Fiend. Let's get it out there. Uh, it's a 0-1 flyer. We pay one red mana and it gets plus one to its attack until the end of the turn. It'd be handy for taking down that Archangel there. So now that he's attacking with that 7-5 angel, let's go ahead and activate this ability. We want to do it five times. We'll make it a 5-1. And now we'll go ahead and block the angel. See what just came in. We got a blinding mage, a one-two human wizard that pay one white mana and tap it. it gets the tap target creature. Now we drew searing spear, which deals three damage to target creature or player. It's an instant cast spell. Let's go ahead and take care of this blinding mage right off the bat. I'm just going to move on, keep it as a blocker, because we can do it at the end of his end step if it allows us to. Didn't allow us to last time. You drew Volcanic Dragon. It has haste. This means it's not affected by summoning sickness. Let's go ahead and play our Volcanic Dragon. For some reason, it's not letting me pause the timer and use the effect of this prodigal pyromancer at the end of his turns normally that's a pretty good strategy but since it's not letting us let's just go ahead and attack all out fortunately now it's not going to be enough damage to kill him but i think we'll get him next time Let's go ahead and end this.
equipment and activated abilities are interesting tools that can mean the difference between victory and defeat. Use them wisely. Thus ends this part of the tutorial. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope it helped. That's going to probably end this tutorial series actually. That was the fifth and final quest before we move on to our final challenge which is actually playing a match. So I'll probably continue doing that in our regular series. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope these tutorials helped you. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments section below. I'll try to answer them or possibly I will make another video in the future to explain some more complicated things about Magic the Gathering. Again, I hope these basics helped you understand the game and you can jump into it. It's a lot of fun. I love playing Magic the Gathering. It doesn't take too much. Just sit down, play a couple matches. It comes pretty easily. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this short tutorial series and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Thanks again.